Hey guys, welcome back to Greenlight Cinema. I was just uh, looking at this treasure trove of junk I have over here. Yeah, nostalgia, right? You know what the best part about these things were? Not the movies, surprisingly. These are crappy special edition versions. But you could do this with it. Make fart noises, right? Because who gives a shit about Star Wars at the end of the day? Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, let's... Well, welcome back, everybody. It's good to have you guys with me. I'm doing Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Yeah. So last night, I got to go watch Ghostbusters with my family. Yeah, we had a great time. Uh, me, even though today I'm wearing my Beetlejuice shirt. The juice is loose, as the trailer says. Uh, but we had a fantastic time. Uh, I want to say, guys, real quick before I begin... I can't say a whole lot about, I can't give out too much of this movie. I can't give every detail away of this film. YouTube last time tried to block my Aquaman movie all over the place. So this time I'm going to just, I'm going to go with KISS. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the acronym or, or uh, keep it short and simple or what do you say? Keep it, keep it short, stupid. Let's talk about Ghostbusters wearing a Beetlejuice shirt. The use is loose! Okay, I am so sorry about that. Let's go. First off, I want to say before I uh, begin, I highly recommend this movie. When I do reviews, I, I take notes. And uh, I, <laughs> I was in the theater, so it's dark. So I'm like doing my best shorthand I can do. I had to revise it. And as I, but that also helps, you know, fire off the neurons in a way where I'm like, ah, you know, I remember this scene, or I remember that scene, so, um, but I, I'm gonna try and, you know, guys, I'm gonna try to tell a simple review, I'm just gonna try to give you a simple review about a great film. Here's my brief summary about it, um, this, this, there's gonna be some spoilers ahead. If you just wanna hear my short draft of what I, my personal thoughts are of this movie, here you go. This movie was fun, fast paced. Uh, broke new ground, little, some new scenes and some callbacks. Uh, we have uh, some callbacks, but not from, you know, it, this movie did not rely old 80s movies callbacks. And I really liked that. Like, uh, I felt that Afterlife, personally, was a little slow. But I now kind of understand why, because that's the way a movie should go, you know? You have your characters that you need to learn and get to know in your first movie, and by the second film, you're off starting a cool, great adventure. Which, you know, the last film was good, but, you know, it was like Gozer again, like, ugh. This was cool. I mean, no painting. This uh, frozen ice ghost. I don't know. I forgot the name of this thing. That was pretty clever. So um, I'm a big fan of sequels go. I felt like this movie uh, did real well on its own and kind of bringing homage to a Afterlife. Um, so this movie to me succeeds. I get. I give this movie personally four and a half stars. Enjoyed this movie. I loved that we didn't get hit over the head constantly with cross promotions like from Afterlife. Uh, the scene with Paul Rudd going into a Walmart out in the middle of nowhere. Walmart right here in the middle of nowhere. All right, here's scenes. Um, Stay Puft Marshmallow Men and uh, they're on you know a rumba. Now they're on. Uh, now they're playing with Sprite. Now they're playing with Dr Pepper, Coca Cola. You know, it's like oh my god. I didn't hardly see about anything and uh you know there's this great little scene real fast before i'm gonna wrap this part up uh, there's this little scene and slimer is grabbing a pizza and there's what i loved about it there's no like a pizza hut there's no papa john's it's just regular old pizza box and he's going after it i'm like that's the shit I like right there. Okay, let's get into this. Oh, by the way, we had claymation and uh, puppeteering. It felt like there was actually more practical effects done in this film than it was uh, Afterlife. Yeah, I love this movie. So I'm not going to overdo it and brag about it like I did bat <laughs> with bat the Batman and uh, other films of this caliber. But nonetheless, this is a great movie. So let's get into it, guys. All right. So opening scenes, real fantastic. I liked it. It was uh, New York in the early 1900s. And uh, so there are 1800s. I, I, it was so fa It was kind of fast. And we get a little, uh, little quote by Robert Frost saying, you know, I, re I can't remember how it goes. Uh, the, some say the world will end in fire. Some will say ice. 
Um, so, you know, it kind of gives us a little bit of a foreshadowing of what, you know, is going to happen with, you know, like a little ice situation going on. I'm kind of a history guy. I like to see uh, those old New York days, uh, uh, TikTok videos. I, I enjoyed this movie uh, in the intro. Very exciting. We, we, see, we get to see the firefighters take off when uh, in the Ghostbuster world, the firehouse has uh, all been closed up and the Ghostbusters run it now. But in actuality, in real life, uh, that's a real, uh, they were one of the first responders to 9-11, actually. So, um, but, you know, in the Ghostbusters realm, we've never actually seen this as a working firehouse. So, I was so kind, I was like, ah! I was a little on the edge of my seat about it. I thought it was very neat. Firefighters get to, to I guess it's uh, the mayor's office or something. The firefighter guy's like, ah, I'm frozen, you know, it's cold. And, and we have this cool set piece. It's like all these people are like frost zombies. They're like all over, like hunched over like that. And like ice is coming out of the, it's like these giant icicles like from the Fortress of Solitude. And a Superman movie is like all around them. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. I really like that part. Cut to modern day. We see our uh, Ghostbusters, the, uh, Gary Gruberson. Trevor, Phoebe, Callie, and they're all going out to a Ghostbuster car. They're uh, chasing the Hell's Kitchen dragon. Is it the Hell's Dragon something? And uh, so that's so that's the opening of this right here. We're like, oh, okay, we got something going on already. That's neat. Like I said, this movie pays homage to Afterlife. She's doing those bad jokes like in the back seat while she's trying to catch the thing. And I'm like, uh, oh, oh yeah, bad jokes. That's her stick from the first film. So I, I like that part about that movie. This movie I'm so proud of. It didn't like have the Egon ghost. Like we, I guess, you know, we needed him in Afterlife. But you don't really need him past Afterlife anymore because Phoebe's kind of, she is literally the embodiment of Egon. Because some of the things she's doing in the movie reminds me of like, oh, this feels like a story that, you know, would that we would have possibly seen an Egon be doing in the 90s or something. I don't know. Like, he experimented a lot with ghosts. So as they're trying to catch the ghost, the Ghostbusters, um, they're tearing up all of New York City. And uh, people, you know, there's like stuff on the news. Well, honestly, I'm surprised people aren't killed after all this destruction and mayhem. It's like all that going on in the news. So then we get our water pack scene. I clapped so hard in the theater. I felt embarrassed. I was like, oh gosh. I, people are trying to watch a movie. But I have literally been wanting to see water pack for ages. So it was so cool to see him. I, <laughs> I love his character. The last time I actually seen him in a movie and talked about him on this show in Greenlight Cinema was the time John and I watched uh, Tim and Eric's awesome job movie. Look at that guy. He said yes. Look at these old whites. Yes. 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 <laughs> Look at him. Oh gosh. And he he's a great actor for bizarre material. His acting in that was the funniest I've ever seen him ever play. And Ghostbusters, he's over the top in the 1984 movie. Hold it! I want this man arrested! Captain, these men are a criminal violation of the Environmental Protection Act! And this explosion is a direct result of it! Your mother! Hey, hold it! Hold it! In this area... <laughs> In this, they had him used just the right way. And I, I wrote that in my notes. I felt that everybody's character had just enough scenes. Like, you know, he wasn't his over uh, over the top, I, which I know I'm going to post some. I'm, I'm, I am going to edit something in this. You're probably going to see him. Yes! Yes! I mean, his acting so bizarre. So, I'm, you know, I was thinking, you got these, like, guys in their 70s and 80s, like Dan Aykroyd speaking, you know, oh, it's an ancient Sumerian thing from a, a Class 5 apparition. I, I, I was like, these guys have not lost their step. I love that. Also neat, because the science of uh, particle physics and the whole rationale of why the Ghostbusters could trap a ghost using positrons and how they've got the Higgs boson, the, you know, the colliders, the, the dark matter coming You're really into this, actually. Well, you know, it's just a tool. You use. Do you conduct seances at home? 
They only land in isolated places. They have taken people, I believe. They do have technology. Lord Hill Norton of the uh, British Defense Staff well, said uh, that he believed tw 23 people, 23 different species are coming because they don't want anything to do with us. I don't think we will ever have a formal relationship, a formal contact with any alien species out there, especially after 9-11, when we broke our toys in the sandbox. If they were observing that, goodbye human race. Uh, I hope, Lord's willing, if I'm still alive and gone, that I'm, I hope I'm able to do silly, interesting things. And One time he got up in the back of the chair. He was got up in the back of the chair and he was all hunched over like this. And uh, honestly, I don't think they're a mass threat, but I do believe they're breaking the law. I'm serious. Title 18, 1202, okay. read the Travis Walton story. So how do you arrest them? Ah, uh, geez. Back at the firehouse, though, they're they're all coming down pretty hard on, you know, Phoebe. They're, you know, they're like, uh, you know, dial it back, you know. Walter Pet got on to her, was like, hey, I could for real shut you guys down this time, if especially where you got this child working. And she's like, hey, I'm not a kid. And Gary's like, ah, I was her teacher. And it gets real funny after that because it's like, and your relation is, and you're a teacher and you're not her dad and you're just hanging around. And it's, I was just, I was like, okay, this guy's doing it. He's killing it. Everyone's like, eh, Phoebe, you're too young. You know, your time will come. So, you know, she's. It, it's real interesting how they play that. Uh, I guess that's the dark part. I, I was thinking, I'm like, you know, the sequel's supposed to be uh, the dark movie where they all splinter off. I guess that's the part. So they're all like, oh, you know, and Trevor, he gets the help, though, because he just turned 18. And I, I pointed out, and I wrote this down, I thought it was so cool. And they always sneak this in somewhere. I think it's so clever. Uh, in the Ghostbusters universe, there's always a callback to Ivan Reitman's movie, uh, Carnival Girls. Uh, Paul Rudd's trying to pl play that movie at the Ghostbusters firehouse. I We see a lot of the firehouse in this. And as a fan, that was kind of neat. Like, we didn't in the 80s because, you know, the shots were filmed in New York. And then the exterior was in New York. The interior was in L.A. So the shots kind of felt kind of not as uh, linear as you'd want them to be maybe but you know overall you gotta you, you knew what the movie was trying to do but I enjoyed the seeing the firehouse as much as we got to it felt like in a way it feels like the firehouse is the Millennium Falcon uh, of this uh, of the Ghostbusters universe I don't mean to keep quoting Star Wars but they you know these two franchises they have they do have similarities well, Winston's kind of the boss now. He's like took over. I think we heard that in Afterlife. They're like, hey, I, you know, Gary Gruberson, uh, he's like, hey, um, Janine, we're having some issues with the containment unit. You know, Paul Rudd calls Gary Gruberson's like, uh, Janine, you know what they say? If the light's green, uh, the trap's clean. Well, our containment unit, something's going on. So she's like, uh, okay, I'll talk to Winston about it, and uh, we'll, he'll send over his special people. So next we get this real interesting scene. Uh, Winston talks to Paul Rod. He talks to Gary. He's like, here's the here's the plans that Egon drew up and wrote up. Uh, so back in the 90s, we had uh, some type of thing like this, and they're like, why didn't you do anything in the 90s? Janine's like, it was the 90s. You know, we're just screwing around. But apparently, the containment unit gets way too full. And uh, when that happens, Winston had to go find property, like, like I guess, on an old part of New York. And so he's got, I guess you'd say, I wrote down, like, a private lab and a division of Ghostbusters where they do experiments. Uh, well, they catch the ghosts, and they do experiments on them. And uh, they kind of develop new Ghostbuster equipment. And, uh, it's, it, you know, it's a neat scene. This scene felt to me like uh, the 2016 Ghostbusters, like uh, leftover ideas. The, or the ideas that got scrapped. Like something about this. But I heard that uh, the director of this movie had a lot of inspiration from the animated Ghostbusters. So I, this movie, like, I felt real like it was carefully calculated, very smart, articulated well. Uh, so this lab, though, is, it didn't feel too left filled. You know, like, we've never heard of a guy. What? What is this? And even uh, the guy looks like Egon, but he's, like, British. And he's real funny. I can't, I don't know what his name was. He's wearing glasses, but he's got blonde hair. He looks like the animated Egon. 
and uh, his even his little Ghostbusters things like real neat looking like it's a kind of like a different division I, I guess you'd say of the Ghostbusters uh, but what they do is they uh, have like a Ed and Lorraine type stuff like uh, relics and things that spirits uh, or people they latched onto they died and so now they're testing their equipment to get the spirits off of it it's real experimental type stuff going on cool setup though it's really neat how it's set up and uh, we see lucky from afterlife and she's like uh got like a hand type thing or she's like where she's not practice on shooting ghosts and that right there if i'm not mistaken is from the 2016 ghostbusters movie kate mckinnon is like that is a deadly high five or melissa mccarthy one of them and they had like target practice ghosts like they had in this movie but yeah i thought that was just a real cool scene we were getting a lot of um a reunion feels like a weird word to use because in a way it's a reunion to us, the audience. But these characters are like, uh, maybe I didn't hear something. But maybe <laughs> they're all they're all living in the city. But maybe New York's just so big and vast that uh, they don't hardly get to see each other because they're so uh, busy or something. So you know when uh, so you know when Trevor sees like Lucky, he's like Lucky, like I haven't seen you in so long, and it's like, oh. Oh, like, wait, what? I thought she... That's just a small little, you know, little grape. I, just a little confused there. Uh, and podcasts, like we see him with Dan Aykroyd. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Podcast is living with Ray. Uh, but he still corresponds with his parents. Because Phoebe's like, he's like, hey, how you been doing? And it's like, wait, again, don't he live in New York? Or he's staying with Dan Aykroyd, right? Uh, but I loved how much Dan Aykroyd got to be used in this movie. Oh my gosh. Is this Crystal Skull Vodka? Because I feel like I was drinking nothing but Dan Aykroyd knowledge the whole time I was watching this movie. Science of uh, particle physics and the whole rationale of why the Ghostbusters could trap a ghost using positrons and how they've got the Higgs boson, the, you know, the colliders, the, the dark matter coming You're really so. into this, actually. Well, you know, it's just a tool you use. Do you conduct seances at home? Yes. Oh my gosh, does he just sit around watching Ancient Aliens all day? No, wait, that's exactly how Dan Aykroyd talks. I forgot about that. But, you know, you see podcasts with him. Dan Aykroyd and podcast have a, a YouTube channel, I think, uh, which I'd love to find it if, the, if they really made one. I would, I'd subscribe to their channel. Um... Uh, I mean, Ray's got this little stick now that he, you know, gets PKE meter, and he's like, right here uh, was from an ancient being that possessed powers, and blah, 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 you know. And so at the end of the show, they get smashed by a hammer. And at the end of the show, it gets like, you know, smashed by a hammer. I didn't have one, I just had this bat. And he's like, that's what gets the views. We'll see. While uh, Ray's kind of his ancient alien knowledge jargon or while the video is going on uh, they get a visitor from Kamal Nanjiani I'm like I love him he's great like I, I like Kamal Nanjiani in a lot of things uh, he, I recently watched him as Steve Banerjee from the Chippendales thing that was uh, but he's a great actor I, I liked him a lot in uh, Silicon Valley I was real upset watching the Eternals and was like oh, he's so underused in his talent but he was great in this. I, I wrote down, uh, he's trying, so his whole thing is, he's just trying to make money. He's like Bill Murray in this, it feels like. He, he don't really believe in the paranormal. He's not really cares or fascinated by it. He's like, I need to make some money. Here's an old relic. My grandma says it's worth something. I don't care. I don't care. I just need money. And so Dan Aykroyd's like, well, let me get the PKE meter out. And it starts going off the charts and it's, it blows it up and starts like ice starts forming in New York and like small little scenes of the movie. Uh, and so this kind of helps kickstart it in a way. After all this chaos and like, you know, the containment unit gets rattled some. Dan Aykroyd, it goes back to Ray's a cult miles away, I guess, or a few blocks away. And Dan Aykroyd's like, Ray's like, I'll buy it. So he's like, sold. 
I like they show Trevor um, while this while all that's going on. He's trying. He keeps seeing Slimer, and they actually used the old Slimer-looking puppet. Like we see, like all the articulation of the body of Slimer. Ah, these fans out here watching are probably like, "Oh yeah, finally seen all uh, every part of Slimer as a puppet." Because yeah, he's got a real fascinating physique, you know. That ass. Oh. So anyway, do we get the whole Slimer puppet? It was real cool. I like the setup a trap they had for him. See, I feel like in 2016 it just would have been CG trash. They actually had real trash there with like you know just Dorito wrappers everywhere, and he just comes out looking all like he's been just. Uh, he looks like he's been hanging out with uh, some frat boys trying to check dude's privileges. You know what I'm saying? So I I love that scene. I was like the grimy 80s. It feels so real like Slimer. He never left that it's like how they were able to recapture that feeling of the uh, Slimer, but you know because in the 2016 it's like oh, he's like, you know real CG cartoony and cleaned up and I I didn't care nothing for that one or his little and he had a little girlfriend. I was like, oh, okay uh, uh. Anyway moving on so the Ghostbusters uh, that being uh, Callie Phoebe's mom and Gary Gruberson and Trevor all have to keep going out on these ghost calls. And Phoebe's like, gosh darn it, I want to go out. And they're like, nope, you can't or we'll get shut down. And remember, you're too young. That's just the working factor that, you know, you know what it's like. You know what it does to you at that age. So uh, she goes, she does her uh, Phoebe thing. She plays chess, you know. And I'm like, oh, cool. We may get like a little Egon scene. No, it's actually pretty cool though. We, uh, she befriends a ghost. She befriends a little ghost girl, um, and they're in Central Park, and it's such a beautiful scene. There's so many beautiful shots of the city of New York. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm watching a Sony movie. Uh, but she she gets real close to this ghost girl, and I always had like a weird feeling about her when I seen her. She's like, you got flames on you. Well, she tells Phoebe uh, that she wants to cross over to the other side and meet her and be with her family. But she can't do that, and so there you go. That's the little, like, you know, something's about to happen. So Phoebe and her start hanging out. She's like, well, you know, I don't really have anyone to hang out with anyway because they're all ghost busting. And the girl's like, you're not going to ghost bust me? You know, don't get too used to Phoebe and this ghost girl in a way. Uh, I think we know pretty early on, though, that the uh, ghost girl is going to betray uh, Phoebe. Um, we hear her talking to, like, uh, another, uh, like, an ominous voice in the distance. And she's, what she has to do, he's promised her, oh, I'll let you cross over. But for me, you got to get the most smartest ghostbuster that knows how to get my weak spots. And uh, she's like, okay, I'm going to keep playing my matches even though I got burned up that way. And, you know, th that to me, and I'm not trying to, and this is a little gripe, but if that ghost was so smart and so powerful, you would have thought that he would have, trying to sway her would have been like, yeah, you know, I like your whole get up, your whole thing. Uh, just put the matches down, though. That might could take away my power. I am an ice ghost. So Phoebe and this ghost girl get really close. We see him get real close. And Phoebe, being Phoebe, shares more information than she probably should. And she's like, you know, I can uh, be a part of your theoretical plane if uh, I, I get this little experiment. And it's, you know, and I was, I was like, oh, like, is she going to come back from this? So she has to, like, zap herself or some type of thing. She has to go in the machine that's in that laboratory, the Ghostbusters Division Laboratory, where they extract in their trap uh, a spirit. But they have this also a little assimilation where um, you put yourself in this like tube and it cuts you off and put your spirit in around and your spirit comes out of your body and uh, but you only get to do it for two minutes and you come back well, being and so Phoebe does it great idea and uh, no bad idea so that ghost girls like all right do your trick ominous ice ghost behind the scenes he starts this chant starts the orb uh so that uh, starts to unleash like an ice age in new york with also the um ice ghost coming out of the orb as well phoebe gets back in her body and at that time gary and callie 
have came to the rescue and are like, what the heck's going on? And they're not even mad at her. They're just like, oh, we're so glad you're alive. And how are we going to fix this? And so New York is starting to freeze and it's actually supposed to be summertime. So now uh, Phoebe, Gary, Trevor, Callie, Ray, Podcast, Lucky, all have to, sorry about that. There's a lot of people in this movie. Have to go... Uh, find the whereabouts to this and uh they so this like team a team b team a is gonna go find kamal nanjiani's character and like hey you might be a fire fire starter and we need to know more about your grandma's relics and team b being dan Aykroyd and podcast go to the new york public library they find pat noswald and he's like, oh, let me go take a look at this. Ah, yeah, this is the old ancient uh, thing. Pat Oswald, a Virginia native. It's so neat to see him. I was expecting no Pat Oswald to have a Ghostbusters uh, So That's about the only thing I got my hopes up and didn't get to see. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we have this expository dialogue from Patton about uh, an ancient uh, deity that once possessed ice power um, but needed a fire starter uh, so he gives them the whole thing that you know you're gonna need a fire starter if you want to contain this iced guy because he's no joke and he'll freeze you. Dan Aykroyd actually gives this chilling uh, part where it's like oh this I heard about this from an uh, ancient text uh, and as you and the last thing you see is your own teardrop freeze as you die and it's like whoa the gravity of this scene though we got one little callback for in this library from the old movie and it's the new york public library so you get the, the old library ghost and she looks she looks stellar she looks sublime exactly like how she looks in the 1984 movie i was well done now uh the team that's looking for Kamal Nanjiani, they uh, locate him. They're like, hey, you got some things missing from your apartment, uh, like the horns to this guy. Did you guys see that? The skull just move. So my EVP. We need it. We need a PKE meter immediately. Is, is there a ghost in here? Cannot predict now. <sighs> Crap. Toys. Toys. Maybe that'll keep it from shaking, I guess. <coughs> yeah, it's real spooky, yeah? So the guy that looks like Egon, uh, the from the animated series, he's tracked down and found uh, Kumal. And they're like, uh, you're a fire starter. You need to come in because you see New York, it's freezing up, okay? And he, I, I, like I said earlier, he is like the Bill Murray of this. Because him being told this, is the greatest thing is like trying to convince him of this. He's like, oh, yeah? Cool. Like, sure. Like he's breaking the fourth wall, like, like looking at us like, you guys believe that he's fucking crazies i love that it's like golly this guy's did pick the perfect actor for that their equipment would malfunction and it's like you know the millennium falcon like an empire i was like boo, 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 boo. and i think what was going on here was a fun noise was that the ice ghost was uh yeah he would freeze their proton stream and so that would disable everything so they're like, oh, we, what, what, how, how do we get this fucking, how do we get this guy? And uh, so again, you know, it feels like an old type of Ghostbusters movie. Just a new story told with new characters and old. And I love that. So we have Phoebe telling Ray, or they're, it reminds me of like Egon and Ray coming up with a scene or an idea. They're like, uh, so our proton packs are useless to this thing. Okay, um, what if the pole... Because Kumal Nanjiani's like, oh, cool. You know, they're like, aha, a pole. Brass and fire combined are the two things combined that's going to put it in a containment unit. And the brass and fire will be like a force field that's like stronger than um, their proton streams already. That's kind of, you know, blocking the ghost from getting in and out. 
even though the city's like uh no ghostbusters like the mayor's like see i told you they were bad 40 years ago back in 84 and uh they're like fuck it or they're like we got to get together so it's real cool you know they should have played that song by billy brown uh, yes well they control they did a statue of liberty scene in this i was like so happy uh, here's the thing about me my favorite ghostbusters film of all time just because it's got that weird feel to it i love the 84 movie of course but the second movie never gets the love and attention that it deserves and i think they kind of tried to do that a little bit in this film and i appreciated it so dan Aykroyd, uh ray is sitting in the corner uh, with podcast and Phoebe, and they're all trying to get uh, Kumal to bring out his fire starter power. They're like, "Come on, you know, do it, you pussy!" Um, they're like, "Come on, try it." They're like, "Come on, you got this." And both the best he can do is like transfer the fire to like the candle. So he's like, yeah, "There we go!" And they're like, "Oh, but we have so much more to go." Ray brings out the fire uh, in Kumal. And I love that little scene, that little part. It's real cool. I'm at the conclusion of my film, guys. I, what, what I love about this movie, and a lot of the Ghostbusters, most of them always do, there's a few Bible references in there uh, to make things feel real. There's always a little bit of real history in there, and then the Ghostbusters mythology. And it kind of just coincides and goes along with it, you know. Uh, real cool, though. I, I love this movie. So here we are at the final conclusion of the movie. Uh, the firehouse is all frozen. We have Trevor and Lucky on the rooftop of uh, the fire station, kind of spotting it out, uh, kind of staking it out. And there, see an old haunted tricycle. I love that little part. I thought that was cool. Then we hear boosh, boosh, boosh. It's like, oh my gosh, and I knew who it was going to be. It's Pete Vaintman grabbing him some booze before he gets on the mission. We see Winston even suit up for this. It's so cool. And Melanin's Janine! Yes, Janine got to wear the... It's so cool. It, that's what I'm talking about, guys. No one was underused in this movie. It's like the director or something. He was like, I don't know, fine-tuned in this. This almost felt so fine-tuned like a Kevin Foggy. This felt like Kevin Foggy pre-planning the Marvel movies. Because, you know, I was realizing... The, the very last part, the uh, uh, post credit scene of Afterlife, uh, they, sh they show New York and they made it back to New York because it starts out in New York and they go to Somerville, but they come back to New York and they show uh, the firehouse. Not a lot of it though, but they show the containment unit. And the containment unit starts to act like it's, you know, cracking or it's, you know, on the fritz. And, or is you know starting to do something and I'm like oh they're building now I see it from this movie they're building a universe here they're they're building some type of you know oh what's going to happen next you know for all the money in the world dollar to donuts I actually thought this was going to be a part three type move or like uh, to be concluded see what happens will they be froze until you know whatever find out in the third movie I honest to god that that's where we we're going to go but it ends great uh, you know the, uh, Ray and Phoebe, they come up with the brass. It, it contains the ghost. It, get, it grabs him up. But along with that, we have Kamal and all the uh, his ancient uh, gar with his fire starter powers. And it is like a real cool proton stream. It's like, you know, shooting out green lightning. Or stops the ghost. And the mayor has to celebrate him. It, fantastic movie. I don't have anything really but good things to say about this movie and I probably can't say anything much more or YouTube will be like yeah, we're blocking the video and no one will get to watch it and I'll be like ah and a review YouTube how could you do that to me you ah nothing felt underdeveloped in this movie great storyline it kept me engaged kept my son engaged that's important if it keeps the kids watching you know it's a good movie uh, but I hope you guys will like this review. Uh, I don't have much more uh, things to say about the movie. Other it's in, in, uh, it's in theaters right now, guys. So please uh, get all dressed up. Look like you're from the 80s and say 40 years ago in 1984. And here we are in 2024. New Ghostbusters, new storyline, great cast. Guys, go see this movie.
<laughs> I'm losing my voice. I enjoyed this. So please, if you guys hadn't already, like this episode and subscribe to my channel. Guys, guys, we made it to 500 subscribers. Yeah, you betcha. Well, new audience members, that's my review. Brando out.